everybody. Welcome to the David Paul Seymour Show. I am really honored to be joined by uh, Mr. Matt Hyde, the uh, lead singer of New Zealand's Beast Wars, who we all know and love. Matt, thanks for coming on, man. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, um, thank you guys. Yeah. Another end of the world. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, uh, how are you and your bandmates getting along uh, during this crazy time? Um, well, in New Zealand, it's, we're in level four lockdown at the moment, which means no one can leave the house. Um, two, you only have to, well, we do three reasons. You have to be an essential worker, or you have to be going to, to get food, or you're allowed to exercise for one hour a day. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, yeah, everyone, obviously people communicating on the phone or via Zoom. That seems to be a very common thing here in New Zealand at the moment, but mm -hmm. it's really quiet here. Yesterday, we only had five new cases wow. of COVID. Um, so, this is the fifth week of the lockdown. So, um, yeah. And what what it, lockdown is, is it, um, is it like heavily enforced kind of thing or is it more? Just New Zealand, like you have to think New Zealand's like um, island time. Like, we're like, we're like, you know, we were island of the <laughs> South Pacific. It's, Sounds good. Everyone's... Like only till recently did you ever see police um police people with guns in New Zealand? That was that's a new thing, um, and uh, that's only certain units. It's really no New Zealand's not like that. Um, people are, uh, actually have been really um, they're banging all these rules as a, as a society, mm -hmm. and a, a lot of a lot of industries have been wiped out, especially um hospitality. Um, retail, um, which doesn't involve supermarkets. So there's a lot of pain out there, but as a, as a greater good, as the community and a herd, mm. um, I think everyone's staying home. We've only had, oh my God, I think we're up to 12 deaths. It's been really, look, it's been really, our prime minister just in the, what's his saying? Go hard, go early. So they shut everything down. But we're kind of like, you can't fly out of New Zealand at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's pretty interesting days, yeah. but, um, it is working at the moment, but it has caused a lot of pain. A lot of people have lost their jobs, but then our government paid wage subsidies to 1.6 million people mm. for yeah. 12 weeks. So, yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. So it's, 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 a, I know that, um, I've been following what's happening in the States to 1200 or yeah, New Zealand's been very generous. I think Australia's even more generous. I mean, Australia's quite a rich country. It's a much, it's a really rich country um, okay. compared, to, compared to us. Um, but yeah, now everyone's doing their bit. Stay home, save lives. Yeah, that's the way to go. Mm. Well, um, yeah, I, I've seemed to be spent a, a fair amount of time with other guests talking about the the COVID situation and all that, and it's and it's great. But I'm I'm, I'm trying to. I think now veer, you know, not spend so much time on that because there's. Well, I, I think it's just going to be a part of our lives now. Yeah. Yeah, and that's um, that's just something that's yeah. It's a, if you look at this, yeah, I mean, the nineteen eighteen, it's the second wave that got everyone. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's not over. Early days, but yeah. Um, I but there's heaps of great things that have come from it. I I, I love the saying, the great pause. Yeah. You know, like society has slowed down. And um, I've been ex walking a lot more, and exercising, yeah, and listening to some music. There's been, there's been some good stuff that came out of it. I'm cooking a hell of a lot, like from scratch, yeah. making stocks. Yeah. <laughs> That's been fantastic. Yeah, same here, man. I I, I never realized that uh, I enjoyed actually cooking so much. My wife's always done it, and uh, you know, I, I'm. It's not uncommon that I usually can can work, you know, twelve hour days or even fourteen hour days, and and um but it's been such a a, a rich experience for me and rewarding too it's like a detox and it's, a it's good for the soul yeah meditate a uh, very good yeah. so yeah, yeah. But, and also you can you can bake it but make in bulk and you can freeze it down and i, I think of my grand when this all happened i thought of my grandparents like obviously they went through the depression and the war so at their house in gisborne it was always food stocked and jars, you know, for enough for a year. Yeah. And then my parents' generation said goodbye to that. Yep. And yep. then now I'm here. I'm like, well, I mean, 
I spent my life working as a chef, so I can do a lot of cooking stuff. So, you know, I love getting back to that concept of like, yeah, let's like bottle some food and like make some sauces and make some stocks and just get prepared. Yeah. 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 It's, it's been good. Been, oh yeah. My wife and I have been uh, pickling different things. With, yeah. With the, you know, and, uh, so um, much fun. <laughs> oh yeah. Fun. And then, and then I realized like, I really love making pizzas, like kind of artisan yeah. pizzas from scratch, the dough and everything. And like, Oh, it's such a therapeutic thing. And then, to take the uh, the pickled onions or whatever yeah. and create, you know. Um, my my daughter laughed at me just before the ice, just before we went into level four shutdown in New Zealand. I arrived at home with like a ten kg bag of flour and some yeast, and she said, "What do you got that for?" And I said, "You'll find out." <laughs> uh, and then we went into lockdown, and suddenly flour in New Zealand was you couldn't get it, and you couldn't Good get yeast, you. but but I had it, so I was making Good for pizzas. you, yeah. Yeah. Well, I was making pizzas for Nina. I was going, "How lucky are you?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, we had we had a nice laugh about that one. Yeah, yeah. I have three teenage uh, kids, and 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 I couldn't believe the other night I made. I I, I kind of after a few times I had it perfected by that night, and and I couldn't believe that kept. I think I was in there for three and a half hours, and I think I made like six pizzas, and they just kept, make one like this. You know, do yeah. make me one like this, and, and it's I, a, it's a really great family um, event. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, yeah, I think a lot of people will leave this time and will think of those memories of how lucky we were. Actually, if, if, you're in a, if we're in a position where we've got room in a house and you can spend time with your family, because I know a lot of people don't have that. Overcrowded, they're in small houses and it'll just be fucking horrible. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, for me, I mean, I just live for myself and my daughter comes here 50% of the week. So um, we've had a lot of fun cooking, talking. Um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I, I, there's a lot of positives that come from it. Family time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm hearing that with a lot of people. So that's that's definitely a positive outcome. Um, I, I think I've talked more with old friends and than I have in years. That's that's another good thing. And uh, it's beautiful. It's yeah. like to reach out again. Yeah. Um, I just, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, actually, I've noticed people are actually talking on the phone rather than texting. They actually speak. They're hearing voices. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I, I mean, I, with the forest fires, the bushfires in Australia earlier this year, like global warming became seriously real for us because, like, New Zealand's a long way from Australia, but we were waking up in the morning and some cities in New Zealand, you could look out the window and it's all covered in red, like Blade Runner. Wow. So, so you know, so, and with this, because there's no cars on the there's no cars on the bloody road in New Zealand. I mean, they are obviously for the essential workers, mm -hmm. but you can see the mountains again, and it's this really. That's there's a lot of positives come from it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how we we can progress back into this like destroying the planet so fast sort of attitude. I hope that, it's yeah. just. I think there's too many people either dependent on that method or 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 they it takes them sick enjoyment from it i don't know i mean i think but maybe there is a potential of change here i mean i hope something great comes out of it it would be a shame if we just go straight back to where we were because it felt like the world was exhausted mm -hmm. you know like unless you were the, the lucky um one percenters or something i mean everyone else it's just a complete battle to mortgage pay a mortgage or even just live week to week, paycheck to pay. You know, I mean, the world seems a bit fucked up. Yeah, I agree. Um, um, I don't know. I suppose we've all had a lot of time to sit at home. I bet there's been a lot of people doing daytime drinking. You see it on Twitter. You know, I've I'm, watched it on <laughs> this crazy stuff. I, I'm, I'm extremely guilty of it. The first guest I had on the show, John Davis, he's uh, uh, from the band Conan. And uh, he, he yeah, they've toured here. They've toured here. What's that? They've come to New Zealand. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, they, we, he and I talked talked quite a bit about the, about day drinking. Um, I'm I'm geared for it uh, for from my background. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was tra I was trained at an early age. Uh, yeah. The, the Mardi Gras culture, you know what I mean? Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Um, I've been pretty good, apart from like Panhead was an amazing brewery here. They um, curried us, each, every member of the Beast Wars, some beer. 
So suddenly I had like four dozen in my house. So um, it's, yeah, I have, no, I haven't done, I haven't done too much daytime drinking at all. Maybe one day, yeah. but yeah, the evening, but time is, yeah, it's, it's gone. It just, it's just, every day is the same. It's like that bloody movie, Groundhog Day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I know I hear a lot of people saying, what day of the week is it? You know, and I think some of them are serious, you know, but. Uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's just so strange, but it's good. We're going to come out of it soon. So um, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's going to be interesting days, but it's not, yeah, I just think it's a, it's a new, a new way of living. The New Zealand, I suppose you have to be realistic and think it's going to go. If it explodes again, we'll go back into lockdown. And you know, in and out. I don't know. Yeah, it's a, just different times. Yeah, it is. Some some parts good, some parts bad. We um Nathan um spent the first two weeks editing because Nathan, a drummer, is also a film editor, movie te television editor. He um edited a concert which we've live streamed last week, and um that brought so much happiness to Sony. I mean, a lot of people wrote to me and said, "Man, that was so good to see." people in a packed room going crazy at a gig and how fast we're kind of like, whoa, mm -hmm. it seems like a lifetime ago. Yeah, it does. It could be a long time to we to a back there, well, at least a year, maybe. Yeah, that's what everything I'm reading says that, uh, you know, at least here in the States or whatever, but I, I assume it's all going to be the same everywhere. You know, I'd say it'd be the same everywhere because it's going to, especially all in the Western world. Um, yeah, I can't imagine there'd be too much of a, a, a rush to get back to it, on like on a sort of health perspective. Um, we did our last show the week, sorry, maybe 10 days before, maybe two weeks before the lockdown. And you could already feel it. We're at a, a, a Bay the Rift Festival, which is actually was at Panhead um, Brewery up in the Upper Hut. And was like, my God, we're so lucky we've just got this. We're doing it now this week. If we did it in two weeks, it, it would not happen. You could feel it was, things were starting to shut down. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and it was a great day. It was a fucking incredible day. Um, nice day to go out on. <laughs> yeah. And we had Uncle Acid. Uncle Acid from fucking London. Yeah. That's a um, great... Yeah, it was a pretty special day. We couldn't believe it. Like Nathan, our drummer, he organizes that festival with the help of Panhead. And it was just unbelievable. He pulled it off, you know. We had Witch Skull, Potion from Australia, um, and lots of Kiwi bands. And we had the Schizophonics from San Francisco. That was pretty crazy. I yeah. don't know if you've seen that. He's like the James Brown, <laughs> the white James Brown. Pretty amazing. Um, it was a great day. It was good that we got that one day in. Because it will be, I, yeah, it would easily be a year, I reckon. Yeah. Well, um, I hate to do it, but like, cause I know the, the last album was like last year and I'm sure for you, it, it, it's kind of like, Hey, you know, but I feel like, you know, having a sensible, uh, entertain or, or, or good conversation with you, uh, I always like to live life with like, this might be the only opportunity I ever get to talk to this guy. So, so mm -hmm. I, I feel like it would be remiss to like, not spend just a minute talking about that if anything from a fan's perspective for me i know again it's probably asked and answered probably ad nauseum for you um you know what happened or, around that album and all that but i but i'd love to uh talk a bit about it if that's cool i think that's fine i actually had to do um first time i talked about it in ages was actually the beginning of this week, we, in New Zealand, we've been nominated for this art prize, this music art prize called the Tate. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Mercury in England, but it's a similar deal. It's actually a, ca a cash, a cash uh, um, prize if you win. Um, so I had to talk about it, but I can talk about it. What making of that record was just really, it was a really good, healthy thing for me to do. It was just, I got out a lot of stuff. And the weirdest thing, you know how we're all going through this isolation now? That's what this illness was. It was just for me, it was just, but I was, on a, I was like on a, just in my house by myself while the world was still alive outside. And now we're going through another isolation, but the whole world's involved. 
I just couldn't believe it. It's like, what the, what the hell? What's happening here? I was a fire um, in the fire. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so weird. Like, you know, you live to see a pandemic. How lucky are you? <laughs> That's a very. It's, a, it's so fucking bizarre. Yeah. Oh, what's that saying? May you live in interesting times. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying this is a great thing to live through, but I never, I didn't see this coming. Yeah. You know, and even though, yeah, but no, that record was about isolation. Um. Well, if you don't mind me throwing out really fast, if, if there is anybody watching this that uh, maybe, you know, doesn't know uh, the story or what happened to Matt. Um, so you were diagnosed, it was lymphoma, I think? Yeah, I had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So um, I was lucky they found it. I was in pain for a long time, for a couple of years leading up into that. And I was starting to think I was going crazy. Like I was using pain medication. Nothing was just getting worse and worse. Eventually, they found that I had a form of cancer when I was um, hospitalized. Because I, and then after that, I was very lucky. There was a therapy that was um, just six months of um, chemotherapy, which is, anyone who's done chemo will know it's just a pretty hor horrible time of nausea. Um, it's just yuck. Um, so anyway. At the end of this, me doing my last chemo, because you're also very physically exhausted and shattered. Um, I, I wanted to do an album and we sort of, we made it happen. That, so I had something to look forward to. We decided maybe four months, three months into the, my therapy that we would, we would do a record. And for me, it was really important to have something to look forward to. Because yeah. I was at home sick by myself. And the loneliness was really got to me. Um, you know, some days you just wouldn't get out of bed. You just, you just, yeah, you just wanted time. I don't know. It was just such a strange time. But anyway, I had this album to look forward to. Um, Nathan came back from England. Um, he stayed at my house. Um, it was an incredibly fantastic time. And it, also my daughter, when she came to stay, she loved Nathan being there too because the house just felt fuller rather than just me. Yeah. There was a lot of laugh, laughter in the house again. Um, anyway, but we would go and do this album. I would only do, say, eight, eight in the morning to lunch or nine in the morning to one. My body was too exhausted to... Um, like, I just feel like I'd run a marathon after singing for that amount of time and have to go home and sleep. But Nathan sort of produced the record, so he was there all day long. It was, it was a workhorse, man. Like, he'd come home. I'd hear that door open around midnight or even later sometimes. And then I could hear it in the living room. He's on the guitar again. Just, you could... Um, it was very dedicated to getting that project fulfilled. Um, it, was, it was a fun time. You know, like... Yeah. It, well, and, and, uh, and uh, the end product is amazing. I mean... Like I said, I, I, and, and I've been a fan of the band early on, and I don't want it to sound weird or disrespect, or you know, it's it's the best one, and I think there's a reason for that. Um, again, the other ones are amazing. It's hard. I think it, living, living, going, living a life. I've been writing about a moment. I think, and also. There's other things that lead up into the album. The band's friendship as individuals had been really tested. Only, I mean, we've only really toured Australia and New Zealand, but we did it a lot. And trying to juggle that on top of families and, and jobs and um, having crazy times away, it, it created, you know, it made, pushed us all away from each other. So this was also us all coming back together. Yeah. So there was a whole thing of friendship again. Yeah, that's great. Um, I mean, before Nathan arrived, <coughs> Clayton and James used to come over on Sundays and um, bring instruments and just like play music in my living room when I was really sick, like those first eight weeks um, of the chemo. Um, so I brought everyone back. I think I, we did need Nathan back to sort of like, he's kind of like, you know, uh, manage us into because we can all be quite dysfunctional. <laughs> he's a very great person. He's a great, he's a great manager yeah. of uh, um, organizing us all. So it, it was 
fulfilled and done. And then we had an incredible time with the album. Like in New Zealand, we got our first number one album here. With that's it. That was an incredible feeling. Because um, we're not, you know, that's, we're not played on any mainstream radio. We're only on student radio in New Zealand. Um, and very limited, like, you know, not like, it was an incredible result. Yeah. Um, and it was a great thing. And we, that, that we were on tour when it happened. We were in Christchurch and we had an incredible show that evening. Yeah, it was a real buzz. Um, yeah, so there's so many great things that came from that record. Um, another great memory was playing a festival in Brisbane with, oh, it was just incredible. There's some incredible, some incredible nights in that tour. Yeah. On Melbourne, yeah. always Melbourne. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's an incredible record. And again, I, I know we're talking about an album that came out last year, but it, it, it's just, you know, I, I, I would have given anything to have this opportunity to talk about it when it was fresh. But I, st I still listen to the album a lot. I listened to it a whole lot when it came out. And I mean, there's such powerful moments on it. I mean, I love, you know, obviously Omens and Raise the Sword are, are two really amazing tracks. And but I think uh, Storms on Mars is got to be for me like the one that just I kind of stop whatever I'm doing and it's just it, it it sounds so powerful the 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 lyrics and you know and I and I remember when I saw the video come out and I was actually like did it get some guy to come in here and sing with he's like <laughs> lip syncing Matt's who's this guy you know and it, yeah. it, was, so, right. it was so weird because like you, you don't realize like what a what a difference all that you know the character oh, totally. I, I had no yeah it's just it was such a strange because not only when you're sick can you lose all your hair and then you start losing the shape of your face yeah and you at one stage when you have cancer it's kind of like eating you inside because you can feel it and you're starting to lose a lot of weight um yeah there's all these different th emotions you have to deal with like when you who is this person in the mirror Mm -hmm. You have to say goodbye to a lot of, a lot of who you were, or what you thought you were. It's a real, it really destroys the ego, which is a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's, yeah. I mean, Storms of Mars. It really always reminds my daughter Nina, just in her words of encouragement to like, come on, you know, you've got this, you know. And she was, God, nine. She was nine years old then, or ten years old. And to have that from a kid, just like, come on, Dad, you know, it's, yeah. She's, she was very inspiring. It's so wonderful that you had someone like that in your life. And, and I'm, I hear it all the time with people who have cancer or some kind of disease that they have the potential to maybe fight back from and, and, and recover. But there's always like something that they need to keep them going and you know to have your daughter and a band and an album that that was brilliant. I was very lucky lucky I had heaps of things to live for mm -hmm. um and I mean I was quite lucky also they got it early I they told me the horrible thing was going to be the chemotherapy but once you're through that you're looking like a real high survival rate here you know you they called it the lucky cancer um yeah, it was just, but yeah, I'll never forget it. And it's great to actually re record that moment of emotions in that time because how fast do we all just move on mm -hmm. and forget? Um, but actually, with this isolation and this COVID, it's, it's been another time for me in my life to like stop and think. Yeah. Uh, and, um, but, as, but this time, everyone's doing it. You yeah. know, like, so it's like it's a, it's a cultural thing. Yeah. I mean, it really affected me. For, I, I thought it made me a better person. I didn't think I'd have to live for twice of it. And maybe I'll have to live for many of it. I mean, maybe this, this is just the beginning. Yeah. This is just the beginning of different, of different times. But, um, yeah, no, that record was, I'm so glad we made it. I mean, I, I did say to Nathan, I said, look, should we make another record? And he's just like, oh, God, no. <laughs> he's like running for the hills. Um, Oh God! I hope you guys make another record. Well, yeah, I mean, I, what are you gonna, suppose, what are you gonna, what are you gonna sing about now, man? I don't know. I mean, obviously, I think one thing I'm very comfortable with is like when I wasn't doing anything musically, I was just living. 
but when I went to do a record, there was so much there. I just hadn't been aware of it. I'd been taking it all in. So I think this is, this is the living stage before we make a record. So we have to live some yeah. couple of years and then we'll see what happens, you know, like, um, but yeah, I, I, I don't see why we shouldn't make another record. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, music's so important to people, especially in times like this. I think live, oh my God, I hope we get back to live music. I think it's so important. I think people miss it so much. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, it's their highlight, you know, like it's, it's just a great, um, when people come out and they all, all meet each other and enjoy music or they enjoy, like in New Zealand, like I suppose like a lot of places in the States, a lot of people like beer here. So like people drink beer, listen to heavy metal. Yeah. Um, the greatest you know, you, ever. you find, you find your family, your family's there, yeah. your tribe, yeah, your tri fucking tribe. Yeah. Cause a lot of us, you know, we all work in jobs or different things and that's not our tribe, it's, but that's what we do to survive. Yeah. But heavy metal is definitely your tribe, you know. You it is. I use that word a lot, actually. That's funny. I, I literally do, you know, use the word tribe. I'm a member of a tribe. I'm yeah. you know, lucky to, and, and it feels great to be a part of a club or a tribe that you. It's just, it's just an incredible adventure and it keeps on giving. You know, it's like I always said, all you needed to do was buy one ticket to one show and you're in. That was the, that's the entry level to this club. That's it. Beers. You got your beer. Your beer's well, here. All right, beer pause. Two gallons of beer for me. Right. Day drinking. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's uh. Oh, oh shit! It's the afternoon there, eh? Yeah. yeah. It's it's almost evening here now, so I don't feel yeah. too bad. It's uh four o'clock in the afternoon, so. Good stuff. Yeah, it wouldn't be unheard of for me to head down to the pub at this time. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. It's early for you. I don't want to see you drink a beer yet. No, no, I'm, I'm having coffee. I'm fine. Um. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a great demo. I was going to ask you, too, um, besides Storms, is, is, there, um, is there other material on the album that covers that? Or is it even a theme that runs throughout the entire album? You well, know? no, it's Storms is cryptic and it's hard to... Definitely about my daughter and that time. My favorite song on the album's Omens, I because it was a few years before I did a trip to far north of New Zealand. And all those things actually kind of happened. Like I was driving through this forest covered in mist and there was this old Maori woman pointed at the sky. She looked like a witch. I was like, whoa, what's this stuff? You know, and then I, and some days I would just put my finger on, on a map and I went out to the back blocks and there was like hills that looked like pyramids. It was just so great on gravel roads. Um, so all that song all happened, you know. Um, but when I saw that woman in the mist pointing to the sky, it was just like, whoa, this is like, like fuck, there's a song. Yeah. For you know, sure. I just had, I just went just like almost like a ghost went through me. It's like, yeah, there's a song, yeah. um, and just yeah. So I mean, to actually be able to do omens, to get that story out, I'm really happy with that. Mm -hmm. I think it's my. I'm just so happy with that song. That's great. Yeah, I love yeah. That song. Of yeah. course, the empty house bit. For sure. Yeah, but um. No, it's just good times. To actually realize a project, when you've to been a, there was that moment where like, it'd be great to do this, but when we actually had done it, my God, yeah. Yeah. So your vocals to me are, you know, um, I won't, I won't, I won't lie about it. They're they're probably my favorite part of 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 the band. Uh, yeah. the, the whole, you guys are a band's band. I mean, everything. Everyone's we all, we we can't we will connect all four of us are the ah the thing. A absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I don't want to get nerdy on the front yeah. thing because that's always where I think people focus a lot of times, or you know, a strong guitar player or whatever. Mm. But I just I just I, I love the power, the ferocity in your voice, and uh, you know, it it just resonates with me, and and I think that's what 
what just grabbed me immediately the first time I heard, you know, uh, something from you guys. And like, um, so I'm curious, like, number one, how, how did the, it's such a geeky thing because it's like trying to ask somebody why they laugh the way they do, you know, but like, how did, how did, how did your vocal style get started? I almost would imagine you have maybe some punk rock influence. As yeah, well, yeah, that's the first thing we did. I was a band called Microwave Babies in the 80s out in the suburbs. We used to put shows on at halls. You know, we did Black Flag covers. Um, yeah, that's where it started. I think, how did I... By the time I got to Beast Wars, there was such a frustration with music with me. I'd gone to England. We got signed at one stage, did a record, and got manager of Bauhaus, ex-manager of Bauhaus signed us. Oh. But no success. Came back to New Zealand, a couple more bands. You know, I was kind of really searching for like, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to go touring. I wanted to make records. I wanted to make records that people wanted. And I, none of that was happening. And after I'd, I'd given up, I'd like, well, that was it. You know, it was sometimes you dream and sometimes it doesn't happen. That's the way life is. But then it was so weird. I was like 38, 30, no, I must have been 37 or 30, 37 when baseball started. Um, the moment I stopped um, wanting it, or it happened, but I, or I had all those frustrations for years of like, you know, playing to no one or trying to get things together and not working. It just came out in the music. It just, suddenly I had this incredible vehicle, which is the Beast Wars those guys and um, combined together, it just created that sound. But I know how it happened. It was just through frustration and years of, of you know, like I always laugh. I, was, I played a show in London once. I think we did honestly play to two people and a dog. You know, it's just like, it was like, yeah. But then I think about it, then you have to think of the positives of that whole experience of playing to no one. You were allowed to develop a complete style so you, so then when you suddenly appear, it looks like you came out of nowhere. They just don't understand there was like you know decades of, of nothing or of playing to no one, that allowed you to, to develop, yeah, that person, that vo that voice, that sound. It allowed you to get better at writing lyrics. It allowed you to to try more stuff. Yeah. You know, like, so there the was. The frustration was worth it, but in the middle of the frustration, it certainly wasn't. I kind of like, you know, like, what the fuck? Where am I going wrong here? Yeah. You know, I, I just felt like, um, yeah, I could, yeah, I would, I couldn't make it work. But yeah, yeah so it was, was, that's what, how it happened. That, yeah. Yeah. That's how the sound happened for me. Um, and also moving to a city like Wellington, a lot of, a lot of musicians here have incredible work ethics. And we live in a really small, in a city where you can actually kind of walk. Um, I've bought people, we've brought like Windhand, we toured for New Zealand with Windhand, and they described New Zealand as kind of like, like a Seattle, um, Oregon, is it West Coast sort of vibe? Mm -hmm. Like, um, I haven't been to those places, so I can't, blah, 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 but um, yeah, it's, it's, New Zealand is just quite quiet. People make music. A lot of people make music and knowing that, you know, it's going to be quite hard to like, for, for things to come of it. I think that's why some of it is so different and amazing and original. Yeah. Um, who would you, who would you say is in, I, I guess, in, not maybe necessarily influenced you vocally, but who, who were some of your favorite singers when you were, a teenager or when it... Well, uh, Ian Curtis, Stuart Division, but then Nick Cave. Um, Those are two. Nick Cave was a big, I mean, he was like, you know, in this part of the world, he was like a god. Yeah. Um, He's kind of a god to me and my wife. We, we, you know, we just, spent a lot of time listening to Nick Cave in this house. So. I mean, the first show I saw of him, it was um, oh, the Good Son album tour in Sydney in 1990. And he honestly, he was like the Prince of Darkness. It was pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Soundgarden, I just couldn't believe, because I loved Led Zeppelin, but suddenly there was a band, that Loud and Love album, suddenly there was a band, like, hey, Led Zeppelin from my generation. Yeah, I agree. That was, 
really powerful. Yeah. Um, just incredible. I remember like, um, I was lucky enough to, um, cause I moved from Sydney and I moved, moved, hit London in 91. So I saw the bad motor finger tour and they played at the underworld in London. Just incredible. You know, like Chris Cornell saw had long hair at that stage. Yeah. And he was doing a stomp, you know, like, Oh, it was incredible. Yeah. They were really big influences. Um, I kind of suppose I've, I've always kind of like junkie rock. I'm really, at the moment, I'm really liking Spaceman 3. Yeah, and I've always cool. kind of liked that sort of forbidden outlaw music that white people make who do heroin, you know, which goes back to the Velvet Underground. Um, I think that's why I like Portishead. Yeah. Well, it's just, yeah, there's this certain sort of music. I've enjoyed, but like, yeah, as a kid, Ian Curtis, massive, then Nick Cave, um, and Chris Cornell. Um, uh, yeah, that's a trilogy. It's a good one. Yeah, of who are really main influences. Yeah. So is that is that a photo or a painting of, is that Brant Bjork? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you that's a, that photo? Or no, it's a painting. Oh, it's um, a painting. There's a New Zealand artist, Mark Rutledge, uh -huh. and he's also got one of Mark Lanigan there too. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to see. It's a lot harder to, to yeah. see uh, that. Mark Lanigan, yeah, I mean, it, it, Mark Lanigan, as, as I've grown older, incredible. He's, he's incredible to watch, isn't he? He's just, I mean, he puts out a lot of songs. It's just amazing. Yeah. Um, I went and saw him in Sydney flew over there actually to go to his concert, incredible concert. It was him and his whole band. So, um, cause some, he had toured here before as a solo with someone on, on guitar. And I, I didn't go to that cause I didn't want to, I wanted to have the whole experience. Yeah. So I'm glad I saved it. And we, uh, a friend of mine, Maggie, so we partied solidly for two days and um, the concert was the end of the two day party sort of thing. Yeah. It was oh great! It was fantastic. We actually got to meet him afterwards because he was doing a um what do you call it, signing CDs. It was pretty yeah. Um, we embarrassed ourselves immensely. It was terrible, but <laughs> fantastic. Um, yeah, I really liked Screaming Trees when when that band first came out. But uh, well, yeah, I mean that's a band I later discovered. I mean discovered. I mean like, you know, because that time it's like um I missed a lot of music. It's only now, oh shit, that record came out that year while I was doing this or blah, blah, blah. Um, I think Screaming Trees, I would have only known it from that movie about the, the, the love of the thing in Seattle. I can't remember what it's called. Um, it's got a fantastic soundtrack, Alice in Chains. And oh, singles? Singles, yes. Yeah, yeah. That, I would only know them from that. Um, and I would have really discovered Mark Anakin for the Queens of Stone Age because my flatmate in Auckland used to play a lot of it, music. Um, that was definitely his drinking, you know, drinking music, like, you know, in our flat. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember, uh, when, uh, I think Screaming Trees' his first record, at least, uh, they, were, they were actually on that SST label that uh, the guy from Black. Oh, it's going back. Yeah, yeah. But then was, got it was like, that was like, that was the goal, wasn't it? SST, and then Sub Pop was gold. And, I had the address to SST memorized as a teenager. It was like, I, I'm in one of these days, I'll, I'll, my, you know, a band that I'm in is good enough, or we'll, we'll, we'll send a demo, you know, and, yeah. and I literally had the. And Jen Craig will take all the money. Is that how you do it? That's okay. I, <laughs> that time it will, you know, I care um, about money a lot more these days than I did then. I was, yeah, I'd, I've read a few articles. This is hilarious. He sounds like a genius, the man before the internet. Yeah. Um, yeah, in New Zealand, those records were available. SST records were available. I think that's how New Zealand got Sonic Youth records. Right. Um, I mean, you could, you could see Black Flag records in New Zealand in the 80s here, which is, thinking back, it was quite important. Yeah. Um, we were so isolated, like, because travel wasn't, uh, no, people, travel was very expensive. It was kind of weird. Like travel was expensive, TVs were expensive, and, and houses were cheap. And now we've got houses are expensive, travel's cheap, and TVs are cheap. Maybe we need to go back to the how it was. 
So yeah, I like houses being cheap. I wish <laughs> I wish mine was a little cheaper, but that's what well, it was. A, a, it creates art. If people can have somewhere to live, it's affordable. Yeah, TVs are there's, cheap. Now, there's time for art. Yeah, that's that's the that's the drug that keeps everyone. Yeah. Uh, brain dead or not not so worried about things which yeah. i don't know maybe isn't a bad thing uh, i'm also a way less cynical the older i yeah. get too, but. It, i just feel like i'm 50 next year um yeah it's just really especially when you talk to your teenager and the differences of life um but i think we're, we're actually honestly i think we've potentially at a sea change and it's going to be forced upon us if it's not environmental it's going to be pandemics mm -hmm. um, the more i'm reading about it the, the, the more we cut down the forest more things are coming out of that forest yeah so get ready for it <laughs> you man yeah. we're going to be forced to change yeah maybe oh, in oh. new zealand we're trying to talk about a caring us as a society i hope that i hope that happens because we've got a lot of people who've got nothing here and we need to look after them mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. I always thought it was funny, Earth Day, because I always thought, like, Earth doesn't need a day. Like, Earth will just shrug us off and, and evolve and move on. It's, a, it's the great evolver. It's us that we really need to concern ourselves with, because we probably won't be here much longer, you know what I mean, in the grand scheme of things. I just thought, well, especially with the forest fires here, we were choking its lungs to breathe, and then it gave us a pandemic where it gives you respiratory problems. It was the perfect fucking well there you go there's yeah. karma you'll die of being gasping for breath yeah yeah um yeah I, yeah it's just i think it just feels like just, things are changing mm -hmm. um but yeah i just yeah i think i'm gonna try and think of the positives that come out of this time because there's heaps um yeah it'd be interesting Mm -hmm. Hopefully we can look back in a couple of years and go, wow, that was a bit of a trip. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm really fascinated, especially in light of that we were talking about our, well, my newfound love of cooking. Obviously, um, you know, you're, you're cooking more, but you, your background is being a chef. So I'm really fascinated by that. There's even finding this love of cooking now that I've found that I've had. Now I started going and watching some of these uh, shows on Netflix with these chefs and they kind of go around and they talk about food and and i'm like wow food you know growing up food was stuff at you know you know my, my parents cooked a lot but but the, the, you know the, there never was uh where i'm from there wasn't this like uh, fresh ingredients and there's you know shit yeah. came out of a can and shit was yeah. kind of you know it's kind of like you know poor poor people way of eating and whatever and uh i don't think um good cooking necessarily has to be snooty but no, no. I'm very Just, fascinated by like fresh ingredients and, and making things by hand as much as you can. And so what was your like background in being a chef? Because I'm sure everybody just talks to you about Beast Wars, but no one covers. For me, um, cooking was actually because of music. It was a job because obviously I started off washing dishes first. You could kind of look the way you looked. And then you could like, and then you could go to shows afterwards. It was, yeah. it, it, I just sort of fit into my lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and then as time went by, you know, decades doing it, my legs have gone now. Like when I got sick, like standing up all those hours, it's fucking can't do it anymore. Yeah. Um, I mean, I do it if I have to do it, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I, music got me into cooking because it allowed me to have this lifestyle. Yeah. And, but then there's, there are some places I loved working at. One of my places called Andy Armo in Hern Bay in Auckland. I, um, Craig Estick, who was my boss, the head chef, he was great. He really inspired me to actually organize, to have a, a, a you know, to organize yourself in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. There's all these practical skills that you really need. Oh, I'm you sure. Know. Yeah. Um, and it's a, you know, it's a hard job and it's low paid and um, you're surrounded. It's like being in a pirate ship. A lot of the time you're surrounded by people who have alcohol and drug issues. There's a lot of anger management issues. Yeah. Um, 
what you see on television is really such a glamorous version of the reality sure. of um and i think for a lot of cooks or chefs it's so low paid now it's very hard to live in a, in a society where um your rents are so expensive or your mortgages are so expensive so and I, I don't like in new zealand they're having a lot of problems finding people to work in kitchens now because you can't live there's there's a you know like it's, isn't that crazy someone could work 12 hours 14 hours a day and still you know and every day but can't afford to live in a you know it's like what yeah. what's going on here yeah. um but i'm i'm really like i've spent the last weeks cooking and making stock from scratch and just loving it i'm very thankful i've got all those skills yeah. and i met some great people man like some fucking crazy characters because you also in kitchens you get a lot of people who've like you know i suppose they've broken the law it's one of one of the few jobs you can go and get um you meet some interesting people man or refugees i've worked with a lot of refugees or first you know immigrants like it's their you know they may be their first job in this society but their kids could end up being doctors you know what i mean like it's such a unique mix of people yeah um I've moved away from it because the lifestyle of it is pretty intense. Um, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's a young man's game. It's just a young man's game, especially the, the, the social life that goes on top of it afterwards. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I could imagine that. Probably. It's, kind of, it's worse than touring in a band, put it that way. You know, it's. That's, that's what I was going to say. I'm <laughs> sure, they, they're there's very there's a lot of similarities there. Oh, know. there's the madness, the fucking madness. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also, you got people with knives. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, it's just. Yeah, I've had some crazy stuff. I remember this kitchen hand like holding a knife to me, like shit, I'm going to die now. Yeah. And we had a language barrier. It was yeah, it was just it was hilarious thinking back now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but then you know you build some incredible friendships with people inside those kitchens, yeah. Because you've gone through these things to these intense moments together, yeah. Um, yeah. That you can still sometimes you get, oh, I remember that service, yeah. you know, it was just so big, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's yeah, it's it's rock and roll got me in there, sort of, and rock and roll's hopefully getting me out. To <coughs> it. But you know, if I have to go back. I'll go back if I have to, you know, we have to do what we have to do. Oh yeah. 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 It was speaking of the TV shows about, you know, chefs and, and, and all that. It's, it's very similar to, you know, there, there's some TV shows that center also around like, you know, being, it's, you know, these tattoo artists and these, I imagine a lot of ways, you know, people are seeing that and, and then they're thinking like, man, I'm going to, I'm going to become a chef or I'm going to become a tattoo artist or, or a singer in a band. And like, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be a rock star, you know, <laughs> all these other people on TV doing that, you know, these rock star chefs or, you know, tattoo. I and mean, what a glamorous life, you know what I mean? And, yeah. Yeah. And the reality is just like, yeah. um, well, I've got some friends who are tattoos and they've done really well, but maybe the market's flooded now. I There's a lot of people want to be, I mean, back then there didn't used to be so many tattoos. No, um, no it was a, that was a very and, fair gig. And they had to start off with these guns that they made. Like I remember in Taranaki, you're seeing them. Yeah. Like, I think they came from the from prisons. The whole concept of making with a bent spoon and them. Yeah. Um, but now, yeah, it's it's yeah. I think the reality. But isn't it always the way? The reality is a lot different than how we imagine everything in life. Yeah. But maybe we just need to ex accept there's going to be good days and bad days, whatever we do. I heard somebody say one time, even 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 the porn star gets tired of this job. Well, it's just gonna be bad days. It's just it's part of the journey, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I've I've, I've yet to meet anyone who fucking loves whatever they do, com like you know, completely. It's there's always challenges, and I think that's that's the there's meant to be challenges. That's part of the human condition. Yeah, it is. Well, and also the the part of it is that you know we inevitably. Like you say, there's good days and bad days. You know, it's like um, I get to get out of bed and just walk down a, a half a flight of stairs and sit here and draw all day and make money and pay my bills doing it. Um, but that brings a lot of joy to people. Like the design you did, the goddess design you did for us, because I did the mail order at home here. When you buy a Beast Wars, you buy it from me. Um, awesome. um, I've seen that t shirt run out the door. You know, 
and a lot of happiness. Those well, designs, mate. Here, man. It, it, I literally have an internal struggle with everything I do, and especially for when I do it for a band that I really, really care about. And it it makes it even worse for me because I, I struggle with, you know, th this sucks. This sucks. You know. Oh, that, I mean, that's one of our top designs. That's like I love, and I do. I see people wearing it on the street here in New Zealand. So good. Man. You know, um, it's super cool. It's uh, one thing I love about Beast Wars is that we've always tried to find great artists, search them down, ask them to work with us. People have agreed. And then we, we get to see that shirt being worn in a city like Sydney or Wellington or, you know, it's happened to me. I've been walking down the road and, oh, there's a baseball shirt, you yeah. know. Um, it's, it's, it just creates the whole community of art, rock, heavy metal, punk yeah. rock. Yeah, I That's love cool, that. Yeah. It brings me so much joy. I mean, I, I obviously, I, you know, I could go to a venue locally or I've even gone to some festivals in, in, in different parts of the country here and and uh, see, oh, that guy's wearing a shirt. I drew that guy's wearing, yeah. you know, it's really pleasing, you know. But one of the coolest things to me is like, uh, I've seen them in airports going to, there's no reason yeah. for me to stumble onto, especially it's a small, it's a small community. Yeah. It's no, not like, uh, it's not like, hey, there's that Elton John shirt I, I drew, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's it's really cool, man. Like, again, going back to that whole tribe mentality thing, yeah. you know, it's really cool. That's what I love about, um, actually, Heavy Metal is the greatest for supporting their bands because those T-shirts, that's the bread and butter of any band these days. Yeah. Um, and the album art, too, you know. Oh, yeah. That just For us, like with Nick um, and Keller, it's also been great that we've had this relationship with him the whole time. Yeah. And that's yeah, just going to continue. The best covers in the business, man. They're yeah. beautiful covers. Um, so, yeah, it's just, no, art. I mean, for me, you know, I, I grew, I'm a kid of the 80s too. So Dungeons and Dragons, Dragon Magazine, all that imagery, really important stuff to me. It, mm -hmm. um, James and me went to see this writers festival and it was guys who um, who write RPG games now, and they were same age as us. But they're talking about the people who played those games were the storytellers of now, right. and I really it made me think, fuck, we are. I, I looked around, shit, the people who played that game, my God, they went on to be musicians. They, you know, they did go on to be storytellers. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So I've always loved that fucking sword and sorcery stuff. Me too. Actually, I just actually bought Conan the Barbarian on. Um, Apple to watch tonight. Um, well, I bought it yesterday. I didn't watch it last night, but um, I bought a copy of it, so it's on my computer for good. Um, I love that film. Um, but yeah, escapism. I mean, heavy metal art. Fuck, it's, it's good. <laughs> yeah, no, it's the best, man. I mean, yeah. for me and people who who like me and you, you know, I I, I fucking love it. Like, it's kind of dorky because no artist or whatever should have a mission statement, you know, but it's yeah. like, I, we were talking before I hit record, you know, I was in the architecture business and, and I had a, a mentor and he's like, mission statements are kind of nerdy. Those are for like big corporations or whatever. He said, yeah. but you should believe in something and you should write it down. So yeah. for, for good or bad that, that I, when, when I started my practice of, I call it my practice, you know, but this, this yeah. art thing. I said, I'm going to do that. So I wrote it on a piece of notebook paper and, and I still have it, still have it up on the wall in a frame over there, you know, and like, I, and I kind of, it's like my creed, man, my manifesto, yeah. you know, I kind of live by it, but it's all about escapism. It's, you know, the, the short of it is it's to provide escape for people yeah. through worlds of fantasy. And I think or we look, important. we look at, we look, the world has many different worlds. That's one way of going through, moving through these worlds. I mean, if, if reality is just life right now, we didn't know what was before and we didn't know what's afterwards. Mm. Maybe it helps us, uh, maybe it helps us on the journey. Oh, you know? yeah. And yeah. some people find comfort in Jesus Christ or whatever. Some right. people find comfort in heavy metal. Who knows? It, it's just, yeah. Um, I mean, I've always loved country music for the fact that those guys are heavily religious, but my God, they were like a bunch of drug addicts and alcoholics. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's just, yeah, you know it's just fascinating. Yeah, um, sometimes in st um, Stone of Doom, you see it, <laughs> those same qualities coming out now as we get older. Yeah, um, you know, it's outlaw music. Yeah, yeah, outlaw music. But what a yeah. welcoming bunch! I think 
again, we were talking before I hit record about my wife and how she's come around to this heavy music that I like because she, her initial kind of knee jerk reaction to hearing it when I, when I tried to introduce her to it was these people sound so unhappy and angry and like, I imagine they're just the most depressed, violent, you know, I mean, yeah. and she started coming to some of these shows with me and then even brought her to travel to a couple of festivals. And that was one of the big things I think besides just the music was, was the atmosphere after the first few ones, she goes, these are the nicest. Yeah. No, that's exclusive people. Uh, it's community scene and yeah, yeah. And like, what a community she fell in love with that she goes how can you not love that these guys are great it's complete opposite of what i thought you know no, it's, yeah. it's always you just keep on saying community 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 it's incredible yeah it is and um it's yeah it just never ceases to amaze me how nice people are mm-hmm. you know what i mean yeah it's just <laughs> it's pretty interesting yeah what's it I totally agree with what your wife, because that's how I feel a lot. Especially when you travel, go to another town for the first time. Yeah. People want to put you up. You're welcomed in, you know. It's it's like, it's it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Hmm. Speaking of uh, touring and shows and all that kind of stuff, obviously, whenever we get back to normal, whatever the fuck that's going to look like or whatever. But For us, it was kind of sad, this whole thing, because it was the first time we finally were going to Europe. It was we're going to be playing Freak Valley June the 13th. That's now been postponed till next year, June the 5th and 3rd to 6th. But we've been asked to come for that. So we're going to do that. That's, That's the plan. That's great. Um, but like with all plans in this time, how do we, can, we can't really say that it will be happening. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's the idea. America. Um, that's what I was going to ask about. It's very expensive for us. Yeah. Um, visa, visa wise. I think it's even become more expensive. I think Europe is um, financially it's an um, easier option at the stage. Sure. But this music, who knows? I might could be still singing at 65, 70. I hope so, buddy. I hope yeah. So. so, you know, plenty of time to go to the States. It'd be six, nice. Six, seven more albums later. <laughs> yeah, it'd, be, it'd be amazing. Playing at art festivals. Um, but yeah, no, playing, but playing in America at casinos or something. I don't know. Yeah. No, I always, the, um, had, uh, uh, always feel like I got to preface things because I'm going to offend someone. And it's like, don't mean offensive, but like, I literally think that uh, of, of so many bands, because I don't want to offend other bands, but I think your guys top my list of a band who I think should be as big as say a Nirvana was or, or a Soundgarden was because you guys have that immense um, likability and, and I don't want to use the word crossover potential because I don't know what the fuck that means. But yeah. again, we were talking before I hit record and, 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 and you guys were like a gateway band, my wife to get what I'm into. And it was, it was so much more palatable. You guys are heavy as fuck. And you're everything I love about music, but there's a palatability in your a- approach to what you do that I think, like, I could see you guys, like, being on Saturday Night Live or, you know, playing at Madison Square. I mean, that's what I think. Beast I, I, for, for us, we're always, because one, these two things, we were allowed to develop at the end of the world. So we, we create that sound. But because we live at the end of the world, as we got, we don't get to tour the rest of the world, so it's kind of like that's the way it is. That's the way it is. Mm-hmm. But I do think I really having our two songwriters played in the Nathan has always really helped our band. I don't know what it was. Maybe it's because we were just here in isolation. We could just do it. Mm-hmm. We'd love to to tour more, but it's financially it's so tough because it's such an expensive thing. Yeah. Um. We were hoping this European thing would then open like little steps. Yeah, yeah. But um, we'd love to come to the States. God, there almost seems like there should be some sort of organization involved that 
just facilitates great bands like you guys. Well, actually, in New Zealand, we actually there's, there actually is funding for people to travel, and we actually got accepted. This is why we're going to Europe. Mm -hmm. so, um, but without, but we were invited to that festival, so you use that as um to to apply for this funding, and it helps. It doesn't pay for all of it, but it helps. No one in America has actually ever asked us. Like no one, no festival had ever said. Would you, could you be here on this date? But that has happened with people in Europe. Um, maybe it's just, take, it's just taking time for the word to get out. I'm yeah, hurry. That, that blows my mind that yeah. there, there's been no festival offer in the States for you guys, because I know that... Because um, we would have come. We would have made it happen. Yeah, of but, course. But, but without um, the offer, yeah. Like the best thing about Freak Valley is like it's, it was real. Something that was real. There was a date, and we could all work around that. Mm -hmm. We could make it happen. And um, yeah, I don't. Well, I think it's look. It's just early days. I keep on telling myself sometimes. Yeah, it is, man. There's, yeah. there's a lot of great things that took took a while for the whole rest of the world to catch up to. We all know. Yeah. You know. So, and, and anyway, isn't that a better story? <laughs> you know um it's yeah it's just we'll get there i, I, don't, you know, doubt it, man. I don't doubt it i mean the thing i'm happy about is our music's traveled like because I, I do the merch i get to see where, where it's going and like last week it was luxembourg um the states a few things in the states um australia's a really big thing for us but yeah, like the music is traveling and, you know, people are buying the LPs, you know, it's incredible. Very yeah. lucky, I'm very lucky to be in a band that people care about. I mean, I'm very thankful for that. Amazing. Yeah. Well, it, it comes from all the passion and hard work you guys obviously mm. put into it. I mean, you know, you, you can hear it every time you listen to one of your albums. I mean, it, it resonates, but um, yeah. one of the things I did, uh read about when i was prepping for this i didn't i didn't know that like you, you guys kind of hit the opening slot for a lot of really cool band big bands that come through new zealand i guess there was a stage where um yeah it was just a lot of great bands came through those couple, first couple of years and we were the sort of you know we got a lot of great opening supports kaist lives was it helmet unita um fu manchu so we were playing with all these people who were like the, you know, the, the heads of that form of music, mm -hmm. but it, it, it allowed us to get out, get out there and play to audiences, which just really helped our band. Mm -hmm. It was an exciting time. I thought I saw Mastodon as well. Yeah. Oh my God. That was a great show. That was a bit later, 2015. Yeah. And I had never seen them. Oh, that was so great. They sound so Power Station is a fantastic venue in Auckland where they played. That was such a great evening. Um, yeah, it was it? Yeah, no, we've played with a lot of great bands. Yeah, we're very lucky. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Uh, it's not luck, man. That's that's yeah. good people finding good opportunities. You know, like through, yeah. through through their talents. Yeah, no, it's just been um, it's been cool. But like, we. Yeah, it's been an interesting time. Nathan's been sort of focused on his new band and putting on that festival. But I'm sure there'll be some more Beast Wars time in the future. Oh, I hope so. There, yeah. there has to be. Yeah. Um, so, well, I was going to say, um, speaking of the future, like how, how, how is your health now? Because uh, something I have not read I'm about your... I'm fine. I, I passed my two years. So what you do is after you, you go every three months, you have bloods. And now I've done that for two years. Now I moved to six months. So if there's no indicators that worry them. You do, they just do a body test on you. To see if you've got um, any lumps or yeah, no, I'm pretty good. Um, the only, thing I've, the only thing I've been left with is sometimes I have nerve pains in my hands or feet, and that's, that can be um, a side effect of chemotherapy. Yeah. 
So I just take painkillers for that. Okay. But yeah. Not, not, I'm totally fine. It seems like during that time, like had I known someone uh, in your situation, I'd have felt like there's such a fragility to him. Like you're made of glass, you're going to break, you know, you're sick and you, you don't feel well. And like a bit, you know, so like, that's awesome that now you, you, you seem like you're just, I'm just back to me, man. I'm like totally normal. And like, you know, everything. Well, I think it's, it's quite hard to die. You know what I mean? You have to be fucking sick. That's, <laughs> that's what I told myself, you know, like, it, that's what a great outlook though. Yeah. I mean, you got to, your body is designed to fight. Even, yeah, I mean, yeah. I do feel sorry for people who get crippled by mental health issues because, you know, and they just can't go on. Mm-hmm. That, that, because that does happen. Yeah. And I think it's because we created a society that people are expendable rather than we should be celebrating human life. Yeah. Um, and also, yeah, I, but for me, yeah, look, my body was not giving up. You know, like, maybe it just, it, it is just a spaceship. It just carries our soul. Wherever we may be going, you know, it's the next stage, but, you know, that's, yeah. Like Bad Brain said, the soul craft. Wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, but for me, it's, but, but may, maybe, I was just like I had music because I could use my feelings of what I was going through and put them to music. A lot of people will go through this and they don't have that. They don't have that avenue. Or maybe they write a book or, or they do something. I think it's important for people to get it out. But I was very lucky to have that sort of platform mm. or this, to be able to go into a recording studio and record my ideas and thoughts. Yeah. But um, no, I'm really good. I but I have to remember I can't. I just have to be pretty well behaved. Yeah. Like I need to exercise. And um, if I'm on, on tour, try and stick to like the three beer limit sort of thing. Like, try and go home after the show. Yeah. Um, that's what will let me let me down on a personal level. Um, because you know we've, or maybe you can do one night of the, you know, the red eye at the airport sort of thing. But you know, it's like yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's well behaved. Just maybe respect it more. Yeah, I, and I, I had read that about you too, that, uh, you know, you, at least when I read it, that was last year or around the time the album came out, whoever interviewed you then, um, talking about your eating habits and, and kind of how you conduct your life and all that. I imagine it just puts a ton of things into perspective, especially when you got a, a daughter who's rooting for you. You go like, hey, man, you know, it's fun to be with my friends and go out and party, but I also got a mind how I live my life because like this opened up my eyes to so many, I just imagine it. Well, that's, that's what does happen. Also having teenage kids, like as you, as you do, mm-hmm. um, and I do, things just change in a way your job is to be stable, making food. <laughs> yeah. You know, like that's what they need. They yeah. want, they want you stable. Yeah. Um, that's so that's, that's, it's been a great gift being a parent. So very thankful to being a dad. Yeah. Um, and then, well, I was in the car with her because she listens to a lot of mumble rap, uh, uh, which I, you know, like, what is this stuff? I but know. I was playing here the cramps. I'm like, what do you think of this? It's going, yeah, okay. But then we have these great moments of like discussing music. Yeah. Um, it's really interesting what she has loved. Give me Shout Above the Stones, Let, Let It Bleed album. Yeah. I know she, that she's got that on her Spotify list. That's great. So she likes that album, and that's that comes from the car. Um, so yeah, I think it's gonna be in the future. There's gonna be years ahead. I'm sure she's gonna like discover something that I loved, mm-hmm. and we'll have lots to talk about in the future. Yeah. So it looks exciting. It's exciting being a parent. Yeah, it is. My my daughter is funny. She she actually got right into that stuff uh, a few years ago. Uh, she actually commandeered, took took my turntable, took all my. <laughs> they're all up in her room now, yeah. which is fine. I don't have the patience yeah. for flipping records over every fifteen minutes, anyways. Yeah. You know? But uh, she she got really into it all, and now she even turns me. Have you heard of this band? Yeah, that's great, and it's actually really like cool shit. I'd be into, and it's like so. Yeah. She, but she also goes to a, uh, a performing arts school, and yeah. uh, 
she's uh, played drums for a while. Then she switched to being a visual artist. And now she's like, well, I think I want to learn how to play guitar. So she's kind of. Fantastic. Yeah, she's still kind of discovering stuff, but she really loves music. And uh, when you, you, with you saying she's a drummer, I mean, drummers are the most incredible people because they have to think on so many different levels. Mm -hmm. I think I really, um, it enables them to be able to react to many different events in life. I, I think so. I, I look at drummers and they always seem to be the most grounded mm -hmm. people because they're confronted with so much choice. Yeah. But I need to choose the right path right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, I never thought about that before. That's very true. Yeah. Art, art it's a gift because some people don't get it. Some people don't. Oh, yeah. It sounds exciting. I'm sure she was some fun times ahead yeah. and some tough times. Got to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's yeah. very pragmatic. So I like that yeah. about her. She's actually got yeah. a good read on people and she's yeah. actually got a, a lot of like i could tell early on business sense and whatever so yeah. i think she'll, i think she'll be all right stop she's amazingly creative but she's not like that ah you know like yeah like a hippie flower kind of yeah uh, you know there's a lot of real realism to her outlook. i think kids are these days because they they do the world is so tough for them yeah. it they do have to make hope to make decisions that will make their life easier or or good just you know it, i think they got a lot more pressure on than i had we were kind of just like let go yeah um yeah. now the world has changed a lot maybe the, yeah it's like going back to the whole thing maybe this is an opportunity for us to rethink it i hope uh, it yeah. happens yeah i'd love a lot of do-overs with our society but <laughs> everybody's it, all in with that maybe yeah. for new zealand because we're so small it's doable yeah. Like we've only got five million people here. Wow. When America you got three hundred and thirty million. I mean that's just insane. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but also you gotta look at like we're we're more of like a continent. We're like we're like a an assemblage of, of a lot of like European countries, if you you know yeah. you know. Every state has its own government and mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And boy, they're very different places. <laughs> I've been watching a bit. Obviously living on an island, we watch a lot of what happened outside of the island? Yeah, watch a you know I've watched a lot of stuff in America recently. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's just it's just crazy. It is. I feel for the people who don't have the masks, the PPE gear. It's just insane. Yeah, and I think it goes back to always. Maybe this time we'll look back and go, we need a better supply chain. So that's what, I think that'd be another big thing that comes out of us is that we'll need to realize that we need. Our medications and our um, medical stuff actually made in our own countries. Every country in the world will need it, need to be yeah. doing this. Now. Yeah, we got to rethink a lot of things. You can't outsource everything because yeah. actually, you know, the more you read about pandemics, this is going to keep on happening. I uh, mean, we've had SARS, we've had, what's the other one? Was it, um, I think it was called bird flu. And yeah. The, uh, if you look back now, we've had all these warnings. Oh, yeah. So I think that those things will come out of it. So many people have said that, and I, and I think it's true. You know, we, we had a lot of opportunity to get ready for this situation. And I think it was like the universe was kind of saying, here you go, yeah. try this out, get, re get ready, get ready. Yeah. I mean, and, and people have talked about it. There's been movies about it that, you know. This, no, this and we weren't prepared. That's coming out now in, in the media in New Zealand. We weren't prepared. Um, Australia has more ICU beds per person than we do. But our, I mean, our, our health system scrambled together and got all these new beds. And luckily, we have not had the amount of um, cases as, say, America, per people, whatever. Um, but yeah, no, we, it's, it is a real wake up call. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, it's a shame we have to lose so many people for us to wake up. But isn't that humanity? You know, it's not fair on the people who've lost their, you know, their, their sons, their daughters, their mums, their dads, their grandparents, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, it's not, and like, I remember seeing the footage on Twitter of people in Iran struggling to breathe. And I thought, fuck, is this a movie? And then I didn't believe it till I said the, um, the, the video footage of the Italian hospitals. And it was exactly the same symptoms. I'm like, oh my God, this is real. And this is not a nice way to go. 
you, they look like people who've smoked their whole life and they've got COPD. You know, it's just, yeah, it's terribly real. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's a scary thing. I really feel like the, the if, if we don't treat this one as the wake up call to get ready, uh, call to arms, then, then it's really. Uh, We've only got ourselves to blame. Well, yeah. I think, you know, yeah, it's like, fuck, come on. We need to. You know, and I think it's just greed and capitalism. And I was reading an article where they took the, the, the business model of supermarkets and they put it to health systems so they would only hold enough stock because it, it was it went against their bloody um, their spreadsheet or how much, you know, all these economic factors rather than like, no, we need this stuff because yeah. we need to be prepared. And I think we, we, will, we will change. I know New Zealand's, yeah, there will be massive investigations. Looking at England, there's going to be massive investigations. Yeah. Yeah. But as, as I said, we're an island always looking out. So it's very common for New Zealanders to be on overseas news sites, just looking at what's happening in the world. Well, good for you guys, because I, 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 I'm even speaking for myself to some degree. I mean, we in Americans, we we look inward so much, and and like we don't, you know, that's that was amazing to me. As I have a lot of European friends and and people from different parts of the world, and they always know. Not only do they speak more than their own language, you know, they usually speak a, a couple or a few languages minimum but they're also very aware of everything that's happening like around the world and in America, whatever. And I'm like, if you would ask me what's going on in most other places of the world, I wouldn't have a clue. You know what I mean? And it's like, there's such an American ignorance. Like we, we basically focus on our own affairs and, you know, I don't know if you I, found that, yeah. how many American friends you have. But. Well, there's a lot of Americans who have come to New Zealand now. A lot of people, I'd call them exiles. They started arriving. <laughs> they started arriving. Yeah. Um, I've got friends from Atlanta, um, another friend from Oregon. Um, yeah, you're meeting, you meet, you meet Americans here now. Like, yeah. it's, it's obvious people are coming here. Um, yeah, it's just, I don't know, for us, we were always, because we followed Hollywood, and all of the cool things came out of the States, so we were always obsessed with America. Mm. I think um, that's why we are the way we are is because we 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 know that produced a lot of incredible incredible stuff. Yeah. It gave the world so much art. It's just you know America's given so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Well, no, it's just it's just it's just things that just echoed, you know. Yeah. No, I get. Um, it. I mean, it's like Britain. It's like you. It's like actually, but when you think about, it, everyone did. But um, there was definitely in the 80s growing up here. Like America seemed, yeah. It, gave us, <laughs> it was our entertainment and the weekends. It was the music we listened to. You know, there's heaps of things. Yeah, sure. Hey, um, Dave, I have, to, I have to go. Yeah, no problem. I'm going to go and um, do my exercise. It's a beautiful day. Sorry, David. It's a beautiful day here. I'm going to do my exercise. I call it a Soviet walk. We're allowed to go and exercise for an hour a day. <laughs> you need to, yeah, do it, man. You, you've been yep. incredibly generous with your time, so I appreciate it. Is I won't that, keep you another moment. Is that cool? That hey, is it was great to talk. Good to yeah. talk to you, finally meet you, and like kind of yeah. in person or whatever, you know. But uh, yeah, so, thank so, you for your time. So what's in the nearest city to you guys? Well, I live, I live in Minneapolis, uh, yeah. St. Paul, um, you know, which so are, you, I, you have to give me your um, – can you email me your address? I'll send you a Ben Brown. I'll just wait there for a second. Do you know Ben Brown, the artist? No. Have you ever heard it? Okay, I'll show you. In Australia, he's like a legend. He does all the, like, surfing. He did, like, Nirvana's tour poster. It's like this. He used to be in a hardcore bands. He's just done a latest T-shirt for us. But I'll send you, um, I'll send you one. I'll, I'll go and show you the sign. Just wait there. Okay. If, if give me your address. I'll, I'll send you one. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Um, so Ben Brown... Yeah, I was, like he's incredible, man. He's an incredible artist. Uh, that's a great shirt. Yeah. Do you, still have any, do you still have any of the ones I did? I think you sold out. Wait a second. What size are you, Bo? XL. Yeah, man. Sorry. Um, uh, bummer. I never got one. Actually, if you're willing to wait one second, I can look for the box. <laughs> okay, I will. It's sold out. I don't even have a small no, to, no, send, no. to send to your daughter. 
Well, um, you know what? That's that's better than me getting one. I'm glad you guys saw that many. Oh, it was a super super popular that goddess one. I think I, I did three runs of it. Wow, that's great. So um, um, I was actually in a Zoom conference that for the other day, and I, I saw someone wearing it. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, was, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Well, if you um, ever get them back, just keep me in mind because I never got. Oh, them. definitely. If we, what we do sometimes is we reprint after a couple of years, so I definitely. That will happen. Just okay. bear with us. But right. send me your address and I'll send you a Ben Brown. Okay. Fair I'll get you a Ben Brown one to keep you going. All right. That sounds good. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, man. I appreciate yeah. your time. It was so such a treat meeting you and getting to talk. Yeah. I hope well, you have a great time. yeah, have a great day and have, um keep on going with those pizzas with your family. I will. It's sound like fun times. Yeah. And you do the same. You and your daughter have uh, have a good time through all this craziness. Okay. Uh, we will. All Thank right. you, brother. Thank you, you take care. You See too. ya. Bye.